Hi, and welcome to another episode of All Things Considered. Tonight, I would like to speak to you about Ben Carson. He happens to be the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. And in a recent interview that he did, that the New York Times published, it says Ben Carson, Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, emphasized the idea that public housing options should not be too comfortable for residents, lest they become dependent on the government services. Well, what the hell, Ben? When people are making $771 a month, where in the hell else are they supposed to live? How are they supposed to survive? I don't get it. In an interview published Wednesday in the New York Times, he said that to be compassionate, officials must not provide a comfortable setting that would make somebody want to say, I'll just stay here. They will take care of me. Ben, we're not saying that. What we're saying is that we're unable to work a full-time job. Our brains aren't constructed as properly as yours is. We want to work. A lot of us want to work, and we would love to be able to handle a full-time job. But we're unable to do that. So we're on disability, making as much money as some people spend on lunch and a day at the store shopping for clothes. So, rent is high, therefore we have to have public housing. We can't afford to pay a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars a month for rent. People that have things can't understand how people that don't have them are not making it because you can make it. And I'm not down on people that work. People that work hard for their money deserve the fruits of their labor. If you work hard and you make good money, whatever you have in your life is yours. And I appreciate that. But please, don't look down on somebody that has less than you because you don't understand why they complain about not being able to make it. I wasn't gifted with a great brain. Yes, I am an artist. I can draw. But I'm also on disability. And I tend to have issues which keeps me from working a full-time job. I would do anything in the world to be able to work, have a place to go to in the morning, and be able to come home at night to my apartment. I would love to be able to do that. I would make a whole hell of a lot more than I am now. But I'm not complaining. Not really. I just want people that are not in my shoes to walk a mile in my shoes sometime so they understand just how difficult it is. Now, Ben Carson... You don't seem to understand any of this, and that that's fine. I get it. But saying that you think public housing should not be that great because it'll make people just want to stay there, for some people, that's the only thing that they have. That's not what they want, but that's what they have. So they make the best of a bad situation. It says here, noting that Carson, a retired neurosurgeon, has no experience working in public policy, the Times recounted the Secretary's tour through the various residences his department manages. Several of the residences mentioned in the interview seem displeased with Carson, and one notes that her meeting with him felt staged. One of the women mentioned, however, she was a fan of Carson and had him sign a copy of his book. Summing up his philosophy of public housing, the Times Square noted that Carson was like, we have some people who are mentally ill. We have some elderly and disabled people. We can't expect in many cases those people to do a great job or to do a great deal to take care of themselves, he said. But he added, there is, no, there is another group of people who are able-bodied individuals. And I think we do those people a great disservice when we simply maintain them. And yes, I agree with that. I do. There is an awful lot of people that are taking care, they're taking advantage of the system. They have slipped through the cracks and they get disability and they're able to work. But over time, they mentally handicap themselves. They get used to getting that government check every month. And there's a lot of people that work under the table making extra money while they're collecting disability. And for that, I do agree with the ones that need the services should have the services. And the ones that shouldn't get it should be kicked off of it. But how do you do that? And how do you weed out the services without destroying everything? Because it's hard 
to know who's available uh, for this service and who's not able to get this service, who's mentally handicapped and who's not. It's real easy to fool the system. I know loads of people that have done that. They fool the system every day. Carson also comments on Trump's proposed cuts to HUD, which would slash 13% of the department's budget. Carson said he thinks Trump's intentions is to point out problems with some of the department's programs and that many of the programs targeted won't be, won't actually be ended. Um, yeah, I mean, what more can I say? At first, I was kind of down on the fact that Carson was going to be targeting um, the HUD project and that he was talking about not making apartments quite so um, comfortable that you want to stay there. And, and, I, and that's true. Like with minimum wage jobs, for instance, minimum wage jobs were not meant as a career. You were getting out of high school, going into college. You wanted to get a little job history under your belt. You wanted to get a little job knowledge. So you get a job working at the local burger joint making less than minimum wage an hour or minimum wage, depending on where you're at. Then you get into college and you work for a degree. You get yourself something better so when you get out, you don't have to go back to the burger joint unless you want to become the manager or the owner someday. Then you work your way up the chain of command and you become the manager or the owner. A lot of people nowadays do not go to school. They do not learn. There's no trades out there. There's nobody teaching anybody anything. There's no apprenticeships anymore to where you work under somebody and you get knowledge of the job and then you go on and do that job. That's gone. When you get a job, um, basically that job was only supposed to be for the summer. When you're in high school, you get a job in the summer, you work that summer job, then you go back to school in the fall, then you get off in the summer and you work that job again. That gives you good job experience. But now, a lot of people have to work a minimum wage job. And that wasn't meant for us. The grown-up, it was meant for the high school student going into college. Maybe the college student to make extra money while they're going to college. Um, you were supposed to be uh, working a job to where um, you could um, uh, get something better when you get out of school. But that's not how it turned out. And like with this housing thing, public housing is supposed to be for those that cannot function normally in society. And they have to have an apartment. So the government made low-income housing available for people. But you got a lot of people that have fallen through the cracks, that should not be on disability, they should not be in low-income housing, but they are. Where I live at now in Minneapolis, I have a studio apartment. It is $440 a month. It's, a, it's supposed to be 384 square feet. I think it's less than that. I think it's 284 square feet because I live here, so I know. I think it's probably less than what they say it is, but I pay $440 a month for rent. Now, every year, the rent goes up $5. I'm on disability. I make $771 a month. I am not eligible for low-income housing through public housing. They tell me I'm not eligible for it. So I stay here. I pay the rent. I make due. And I do what I can um, to be uh, able to survive and have some sort of a life. Now, there's people in my building that have been grandfathered in. You had to have a certain income to move in here. Now... You can make, after you've moved in, you could strike it rich on the lottery and, and you could be living uh, living here for the rest of your life. I know a guy now, he's making $4,000 a month. Yes, $4,000 a month. He lives here because it's cheap rent. If I had $4,000 a month, I would love to be in a regular apartment. If I was making that kind of dough... I would love to have a regular apartment, or at least a one bedroom, something decent where I could have a nice kitchen, I could have my bedroom, I could have my art studio set up, and when I cook, I wouldn't have to worry about the smell of the food going all over the apartment like it does here. I have to wash my clothes at least two times a week because when I cook, the smell of the food gets all up in my clothes. 
and it gets into my apartment because there's not adequate space in these type of apartments. But I cannot get a regular apartment. I cannot afford regular rent. So I've been living here since 2007. Now, I would love to move back to Seattle. That's where my heart is at. And I constantly talk about Seattle. And I constantly talk about the things that's going on there. And I'm trying to help Seattle get out of its rut. I'm trying to help Seattle get back on track and be the Seattle that it used to be. The great, the good Seattle. The Seattle that had clean air. Hardly any traffic in downtown. It had a good bus system. It had uh, low-income housing. It had um, a way where you could just move into the city if you felt like it. And they were, you could find an apartment. Now, you can't find nothing because it's too overcrowded. I lived in Seattle back in the 90s. And I moved because of a couple of reasons. Family, for one. And a stupid mistake I made hooking up with some woman that I didn't know very well, who I thought I knew extremely well, and I found out that I didn't, and I was young and stupid, and so I moved. If I would have stayed in Seattle, I could have weathered the storm, and I could have an apartment right now, and I could have made things work, and I would be able to help Seattle better than I can now. Now I just have to write to city council, and I have to just make things work. But back then, I was in Seattle, and, you know, I, I moved. So now I'm making the best of a bad situation, which is not that bad. It just is kind of bad. But Ben Carson, he doesn't really know anything about any of this. He's put into a job that he doesn't understand. And he's talking about things. And he's got good ideas for some stuff. He does. And, and I get it. And that's fine uh, that he's like that. You got to finally admit that you're way over your head instead of just trying to slump through like Donald Trump is doing as president. He has absolutely no idea what he's doing. I'm sure he means well. I understand what's going on, so I'm not as down on him as a lot of people. I understand that, that Trump never wanted to be president. Somebody f stuck him in office, and it wasn't the voters, contrary to popular belief. Y'all think he was voted in, but he wasn't. Somebody put him in office. And to be honest with you, this may sound bad, but I think Trump was put into office to get our minds off of the last eight years of Obama because there's people out there that hated having a black president. I thought it was great. If Obama could have got more stuff done, that would have been better. But he did the best he could with what he had to work on coming out of eight years of uh, George W. Bush and all the major financial strains that we've had. But even with Bush, after he got out of office, he's done a lot of good. He's not a horrible person like people think he is. He just made horrible decisions while he was president. So, anyway, um, speaking of Ben Carson, he means well, and I understand what he's talking about, but he doesn't really know what it's like to be homeless or he doesn't know what it's like to be low income and stuck on public housing because he's never been there. He doesn't understand. Like me, I've been homeless before and I know what it's like to be homeless and I know how to get out of being homeless if you want to truly be out of being homeless. But you can't be in a city homeless where it's hard to find an apartment. You got to go someplace and I'm telling you it's not easy. When you live somewhere and you're homeless or you live somewhere and you can't afford to rent, and you're on low income making disability money like SSI, you cannot afford to move. You're stuck. You either got to do it and be homeless where you're going, or you just weather it out. And I'm telling you, you know, it's just not that easy. And like in Seattle, where I talk about all the time, they're building low income housing, but guess what? Low income housing for them is $60,000 a year for a single person. And yes, they are building low-income housing, but they're building them for the $60,000 a year person. So when you take 30% of the area median income and you have to pay that, that's still going to run you um, about uh, maybe $1,000 to $2,000 a month because they're putting those low-income apartments in areas where they're making between 80 and 150 grand a year. You got to take the area median income and split that in half. And you do that 
Well, basically the area median income, you take that and uh, you take the total amount from say 80,000 maybe on the low end and 150 on the high end and then you take 60% of that. You split that in half and then you take 60% of that and people that are uh, on uh, low income, they pay 30%. So you're still 1,000 uh, to 2,000 a month, low income and the people that are that are on low income that are making uh, uh, less than twelve thousand a year, they've got nothing coming. On that note, uh, remember Ben Carson. It's possible HUD could be changing, and it's possible that low income prices for apartments could be going up. So what you pay to to two hundred and a half for an apartment might be going up here shortly. I'll keep you posted that. Anyway. If you like my videos, please put a big old thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to my videos, hit the bell. If you got an idea for a better video, please put it in the comments below. If you uh, think that uh, I need to hop off and take a long trip to another planet, let me know that too. I'll put some uh, uh, links in the description to give you more information about what I'm talking about. This has been All Things Considered. Have a good night, America, Seattle, and all points beyond.